So I want to, I feel like I, I need to give an update on what's going on in Israel. What's pretty amazing to me, because I follow the news, like I follow the news. Those of you who know me know I follow the news. Uh, and there is so little being reported in the national media about what's going on. Literally, World War III is happening right now in the Middle East. Israel is, is on the verge of invading with a ground invasion into Lebanon to destroy Hezbollah, who's a terror proxy funded and financed by Iran, the Iranian uh, ayatollahs who are trying to wipe Israel off the map. That's their stated goal in Iran is to drive the Jews into the Mediterranean Sea and to destroy Every last Jew who lives in the land of Israel, because it's an affront to Islam. Islam once ruled over Jerusalem and ruled over Israel. And so according to the Quran and according to the teachings of Allah, the God of the Muslims, once the Muslims control an area, they can never lose that area again. Because otherwise that would show there's a God that's greater than Allah. And of course the Jews came back into their land. They were dispersed for nearly 2,000 years. They came back into their land the end of the 1800s, the late 19th century, the early 20th century, with the Zionist movement, Theodore Herzl and, and the rest, and they came back to the land. They were made a nation again after the Holocaust on May 14th, 1948. And uh, the Bible says that once Israel comes back into the land, because it was prophesied that they would be dispersed and come back, they'll never be uprooted from their land again. However, the Muslims see this as an affront because, in essence, it shows that Allah is not that powerful. Uh, Jehovah is greater than Allah because the Jews are there in the land where the Muslims ruled for a long time. I mean, the Ottoman Turks ruled over the Holy Land for, for at least 400 years, uh, from 1517 until 1917 when the British took it over after World War I. And so uh, there's a lot happening right now, and I want to just give a quick update. We're going to be in Colossians in just a minute. Uh, but we do need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I encourage you to follow Amir Sarfati, Behold Israel. He has over a half a million followers on uh, Telegram. Is it Telegram? Telegraph? Telegram? Graham? Is it Telegram? I think it's Telegraph. I think it's Telegraph. So Telegraph, one of the two. I think it's Telegraph. It's, 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 a, it's like a social media site that, that basically... Uh, they don't have as many restrictions on it. And so Amir Sarfati is able to give daily and hourly and minute-by-minute minute updates on what's going on uh, in the Middle East right there in Jerusalem. And, and all, uh, basically, uh, Galilee got shelled uh, overnight. The Sea of Galilee got shelled overnight. I've been to the Sea of Galilee. I've been on the Sea of Galilee. I've stayed in Capernaum uh, and in the area, Tiberias and the areas around the Sea of Galilee. They're being shelled. Haifa was shelled last night by Hezbollah. Um, Israel wiped out, I don't know how many thousands, tens, maybe maybe 10,000 of Hezbollah's rockets with uh, preemptive airstrikes yesterday. Of course, Israel had a, <clears throat> an amazing uh, spy, uh, Mossad uh, uh, Shin Bet uh, uh, program, where they somehow uh, intercepted the pagers that just went to Hezbollah, this terrorist organization's top leaders, and the pagers blew up on them. A lot of them lost their fingers. Some of them lost their eyes. Yeah, these are terrorists, guys. These are evil people who are killing Israeli women and children indiscriminately and uh, with a state of goal of killing all the Jews, not just military targets, but civilian targets as well. Hezbollah and, and Hamas are just evil. They're wicked. Remember October 7th? It wasn't even quite a year ago. And the horrific things that Hamas did uh, to the Jews. And so uh, Israel blew up their pagers, injuring about 5,000 and killing about uh, uh, about 40 or so uh, Hezbollah fighters. And then the next day, walkie-talkies of uh, uh, Hezbollah blew up and killed another 42, I think, Hezbollah leaders uh, and a bunch of other Hezbollah terrorists. Um, and then they can't communicate. It's genius because now Hezbollah can't talk to each other anymore because they're all throwing their, their, their pages away and throwing all of their technology away because they're afraid it's going to blow up. Israel's so brilliant. So what happened is, is the top generals of Hezbollah, the number two man, second to Nasrallah, who runs Hezbollah in Lebanon, all the top leaders, top echelon, got together in a bunker at the bottom of a big building in Beirut. The Jews knew it was happening, and they dropped a bunker buster bomb that went down, blew the whole building up, and killed another 
20 Hezbollah leaders, the top, top leaders of Hezbollah were killed in this attack. Friday, I think it was. And, uh, and now Israel is actually rolling tanks up into the northern border. They're literally moving tanks right now as we speak on the move. They already have um, 150,000 troops stationed at the border. Israel, listen to me. It's going to be news. If you're not reading on your news, you're watching the wrong news. But Israel is going to be invading Lebanon here probably within the next week, maybe sooner, maybe a couple weeks. But uh, they're softening up uh, Hezbollah's uh, air defenses and all the rest. So this could escalate. This is right before a U.S. election, you know. And, and so this is, gonna, this is just kind of bringing everything in the Middle East to a conflagration. We already have Russia and China and Iran partnering together. And we have the war in Ukraine and all the rest. And this is just another uh, upping uh, sort of, of the uh, escalation of what's going on over there. And Israel's done. They're, they're done. They've had 80,000 uh, civilians that have been out of their homes in the northern part of Israel for almost a year because Hezbollah continues to shell them indiscriminately, shelling men, women, children. They killed, Hezbollah killed 12 children in a soccer field, uh, mostly Druze children that weren't even Jewish. They were Arabs. Uh, and so anyways, we, we need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And I want to I read you something here, read you a couple scriptures here. Why do we care about Israel? Because God cares about Israel. Israel is still God's chosen people. Jesus Christ is coming back to save the nation of Israel from the Antichrist. So Israel is still the apple of God's eyes. As a matter of fact, we're told in Zechariah chapter 2 and verse 5, For I, says the Lord, will be a wall of fire all around her. I will be the glory in her midst. Up, up, flee from the land of the north, says the Lord. For I have spread you abroad like the four winds of heaven, says the Lord. Up, Zion, another name for Jerusalem. Escape you who dwell with the daughter of Babylon. For thus says the Lord of hosts, he sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you, which plunder Israel. For he who touches you, Israel, touches the apple or the pupil of God's eye. The pupil of God's eye is what God considers Israel. Very, very significant language there. It's, it's like the, you know, when, when a father has a, a, a daughter and it's the apple of his eye. That's what it means. Like God has his eye on Jerusalem. He has his eye on Israel. And then he says, for surely I will shake my hand against them and they shall become spoil for your, their servants and you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. So the Lord... Uh, watches over Israel. Uh, uh, he protects his, his people. And uh, Israel's not perfect, and, and, and Israel's uh, overwhelmingly not saved. They, they, they will be if they, if they survive to the end of the, uh, what the Bible says is the end of the tribulation period. That's why Jesus Christ is, is coming back, is to save the Jews and to fulfill all of the covenantal promises that God made to the nation of Israel. In Psalm 121 and verse 1, the Lord says, I will, or the Bible says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He's, God is speaking to Israel. He who keeps you, Israel, will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. This prophecy is given to the nation of Israel. And God still is the one who defends Israel. He's Israel's defender. They are forever a nation before God. The Lord shall preserve your going out and coming in from this time forth even forevermore. That means forevermore, that God is going to do this for the nation of Israel. In a matter of fact, in Jeremiah chapter 31, when uh, the Lord reveals the new covenant in Jesus Christ and through Jesus Christ uh, to the prophet Jeremiah, we read this in verse 33. But this is the covenant that I will make with who? The house of Israel. After those days, Jeremiah 31, 33, says the Lord, I will put my law in their minds. I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God. They shall be my people. No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. Who shall all know him? 
Israel. That's what he's talking about. The nation of Israel. The people of Israel. From the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and their sin I will remember no more. Thus says the Lord who gives the sun for a light by day. The ordinances of the moon and the stars for a light by night. Who disturbs the sea and its waves roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. Here's what the Lord says. If those ordinances depart from before me, says the Lord. What ordinances? The sun for a light by day, the moon and the stars for a light by night. God says if those ordinances, if the sun disappears, the moon disappears, you wake up one morning, the sun doesn't rise, you look out at night, there's no more moon or stars. If those ordinances, the sun, moon, and stars depart from before me, says the Lord, only then the seed of Israel shall also cease from being a nation before me forever. God doesn't use words like everlasting or eternal or forever lightly, but he makes these promises to Israel. God made a covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and God is a covenant-keeping God. So as long as the sun came up this morning, God says, you could trust Israel is still a nation before me forever. Then God says, in case anybody, you know, missed it, he says, if the heaven above can be measured... And the foundations of the earth searched out beneath. Then I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done. They still can't measure the heavens. They have no idea what's going on in the universe. Whether it's expanding, slowing down, contracting, they have no clue. They can't measure the universe. And nobody knows what's really in the heart of the earth. They keep changing their science on what's in the heart because they don't know. You can't get down that far to know what's under the earth to its core. It's all theoretical science. So again, God says, if the heaven can be measured, which it cannot, and the foundations of the earth search out beneath, which it cannot, only then will I cast off all the seed of Israel. And so God is a covenant-keeping God. He made covenants with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, with Judah, with David, and with all the descendants of the nation of Israel. And God will fulfill his covenantal promises to his people, the Jews. In Jeremiah 33 and verse 25, the Lord says this, If my covenant is not with the day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinance of the heavens and the earth, then I will cast away the descendants of Jacob, Jacob's another name for Israel, and David my servant, so that I will not take any of his descendants to be rulers over the descendants of who? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For I will cause their captives to return. I will have mercy on them. Guys, Christianity... Christianity teaches that Jesus Christ, the Bible teaches in the New Testament and the Old, that God is not done with the Jews, with the nation of Israel. And Christianity did not replace Israel. We're not Israel. Israel is still Israel. The physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God says, as long as uh, my covenant with the day and night, the sun is still there, the moon is still there at night, the stars are still there. He says, I'm not going to cast away the descendants the offspring of Jacob, which is another name for Israel, and David, my servant, because Jesus Christ is uh, of the son of David and and the kingly line of David, humanly speaking. And Jesus Christ is going to have an everlasting kingdom where he's going to rule and reign over the earth from Jerusalem. Uh, And, you know, God made all these promises to the Jews. In Genesis chapter 12, God made the promise to Abraham, uh, I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who who curse you, and on account of you all be a blessing, you will be a blessing to the whole world. In Numbers chapter 24, even the uh, prophet uh, uh, Balaam, who uh, was not a great guy, but he was still a true prophet, he says this in Numbers chapter 24 and verse 5, how lovely are your tents, O Jacob, your dwellings, O Israel, verse 8, God brings him, Israel, out of Out of Egypt, he has strength like a wild ox. He shall consume the nations, his enemies. He shall break their bones and pierce them with his arrows. He bows down. He lies down as a lion. And as a lion, who shall rouse him? It's all talking about the nation of Israel. Blessed is he who blesses you, Israel. And cursed is he who curses you. One of the reasons God has blessed America so tremendously is because America has been Israel's only friend in the world since 1948, really. The only friend that's really stood with them through thick and thin. And God has blessed America like no nation has ever been blessed in the history of the world. We certainly aren't a righteous people. We don't deserve to be blessed. 
But we are the most blessed nation in the history of the world. We're the most prosperous nation. We're the wealthiest nation. Even the poorest among us, even the homeless, are wealthy uh, by third world standards all around uh, the globe. And then one more scripture here before we pray. Uh, New Testament, Romans chapter 11, talking about the Jews. Paul says this in verse 25 of Romans 11. He says, For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceit, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. In other words, God has uh, put Israel aside to save the Gentiles, Jews and Gentiles, who make up the body of Christ, a new man in uh, the body of Christ. Christ the head, we're the body. Many members, Jews and Gentiles, make up the body of Christ, the church. God has set the nation of Israel aside. But when the fullness of the Gentiles has come in, when that last Gentile gets saved, then, verse 26 says, all Israel will be saved. Romans eleven twenty six. 26. All Israel will be saved as it is written. The deliverer will come out of Zion. He will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Jacob's another name for Israel. For this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. Concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. But concerning the election, they are beloved for the sake of the fathers. Romans eleven twenty nine. 29, for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Uh, have you ever seen an irrevocable trust? It's unchangeable. It's unalterable. God is God. When he makes a promise, he keeps his promise. And he made tremendous, prom- not just one promise, but a whole Bible full of promises to the nation of Israel. It's an irrevocable promise because God uh, is a covenant-keeping God. And so... Um, we want to pray now for, for, for the nation of Israel, uh, also for the civilians on both sides, uh, even as we prayed when Israel invaded Hamas uh, in Gaza, and it's pretty much obliterated uh, the entire uh, military uh, organization of the terrorist group Hamas in the Gaza. So uh, let, let's bow our heads and pray. And Father, we thank you that you, <laughs> the sun came up this morning. You tell us as long as the sun comes up in the morning, your promises stand to your people Israel. The moon Uh, has been out, a nice full moon and harvest moon, Lord, the the beautiful stars at night. And you tell us, Lord, as long as the moon is in the sky at night and the the stars are shining in the heavens at night, your promise with Israel stands. Lord, you tell us that if we can measure the heavens and measure the depths of the earth, then, then maybe your promise to Israel would fail. And yet, Lord, we can't measure the heavens. We have no clue. And we can't measure the depths of the earth, Lord. With all of our science and brilliance and technology, we still have no clue. And Lord, thank you for giving us these uh, examples so that we would know your promise to your covenant people Israel still stands. And Father, we pray, uh, Lord, for that tiny nation in the Middle East, uh, just six million Jews there against all of these vast armies uh, uh, of Islam that are uh, just uh, trying to drive them into the sea. We thank you for preserving your people. We thank you for bringing your people back to their homeland uh, uh, May 14th of 1948 and uh, resurrecting the nation of Israel from the dead. We thank you that you promised in your word that once Israel returned to the land in the last days, they would never be uprooted from their land again. And we thank you, Jesus, that you tell us you're coming back to set your feet on the Mount of Olives to destroy Israel's enemies and to save your covenant people, your brethren, the Jews. And so, Father, we pray, Father, for uh, uh, the civilians there and the citizens of, of Israel. You would keep them safe. Thank you that no one has been killed by all these missiles that have been flying in the last couple of days uh, from Lebanon, from uh, Hezbollah. Lord, you've been uh, watching over your people. We continue to pray for protection. Uh, we also pray, Lord God, you'd give wisdom uh, to Benjamin Netanyahu, Lord, and to the leadership there, the military leadership uh, of the Jews, Lord, that they would have wisdom, Lord, and, uh, Lord, that you would give them victory, just like you did in, in, in the book of Joshua, Lord God, when the Jews were conquering their enemies coming into the promised land. Uh, we thank you, Father God, uh, that we have the privilege of standing with your people, with your people, Israel, Father, as a church. And we know, Lord, you tell us you're going to bless those who bless Israel. You're going to curse those who curse Israel because they are your chosen people, Lord. And Uh, Your promises and your gifts are irrevocable, unalterable. And so, Father, we just pray your will to be done, Lord God, and we uh, thank you in advance, Lord, 
for what you're going to do there in the Holy Land. And we pray this. And also, Lord, for all the civilians in Lebanon, there's many good people in Lebanon as well, Father, that are not part of this Hezbollah terrorist organization, Lord. And we pray you protect the civilians in Lebanon as well, Father God, and just bring this to a quick end, this war to a quick end, we pray. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen.